And now, from the Room 111 Studios, it's Hacking Engagement with James Sternovich. Hey, welcome back to the Hacking Engagement Podcast. I got a negative review on my previous book. I mean, the vast majority of reviews were outstanding, but I got a negative review, and the reader was disappointed that the book seemed more geared toward older kids. And if I think back to my podcast, a lot of times, a lot of times I interview my students or other high school students or middle school students or, or college kids, and you know, I thought about that and. Perhaps I need more younger voices. So a couple weeks ago, I interviewed John Belt's amazing sixth grade students. And today, baby, oh my gosh, do I love this episode. Today, I'm going out east and I'm going to interview Matt Poricelli and his wonderful fourth grade students at Mamaroneck Avenue School just outside of Manhattan. And, and I want to tell you something. These kids are just wonderful. They're beautiful. They're, they're just wonderful. It's just, it's just revitalizing to listen to these wonderful young voices. And man, these kids are going places you're going to find out. So today we're going to talk to Matt Porticelli and his students Tuana, Luke, Dash, Lena, and Noah. <laughs> I mean, this episode is like a breath of fresh air. Now, in the in the title, Matt Porticelli is designated the student-led learning evangelist. And these students are like his disciples and going to talk about his class and why they love it so much. But man, there's something deep here. There's something even more profound here. What's going to come through on this episode, in addition to Matt's great suggestions, is the profound love these students have for their teacher. So as you listen to this episode, take in what these kids are saying and and think about how that translates to this deep affection between Matt and his students. Something else, you simply got to go to my show notes. And perhaps I haven't done a good job, well, I haven't done a good job of explaining where you go for that. You go to jamesallensturdivant.com. And Alan is spelled A-L-A-N, bam, and that's it. If you go there, you're going to see a Google Doc that Matt shared with me, and it includes exactly how he does flexible seating, student-led lessons, passion projects, which the kids talk about a lot, and how he's hacked assessment. In addition, you're going to see images of these beautiful young people. Just go for that, if nothing else. Needless to say, buckle up, man. You're going to love this episode because I love this episode. Hey, so get this, listener. My publisher contacts me and says, I love the way hacking engagement is selling. How about doing 50 more? (laughs) I was all over it like a cheap suit. So the name of the book is Hacking Engagement Again, 50 Teacher Tools That Will Make Students Love Your Class. And it's going to be available on Amazon's virtual shelves in the late summer of 2017. In the meantime, if you're looking for more teacher empowerment resources, as always, visit hacklearning.org. Now let's get back to the solutions part of the Hacking Engagement Podcast. So here we are in the room, 111 Summer Studios, and we're going out east to the Big Apple. We're going to go to a town called Mamaroneck, is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> it's right outside the Big Apple. We're talking just 13 miles from Manhattan, but as our wonderful guests say, 13 miles doesn't mean much. <laughs> so we have right here Matt Poricelli. Say hello, Matt. Hey, everybody. Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a fourth grade teacher at Mamaroneck Avenue School, um, but I didn't always start off as a teacher. I actually was an accountant beforehand. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, other than a crippling caffeine addiction. Um, <laughs> I also, I met my wife there. I guess I should say that, too. So that was a good thing. Yeah. Uh, um, other than that, you know, I, I knew pretty much right away that that wasn't for me. And I uh, went back into education and been here about nine years. Well, look, I'll tell you what. Matt's a good-looking guy. He's got a wonderful Italian name. Uh, I don't picture virile Italian guys teaching uh, elementary school. So you got to tell me about that. You know, um, 
I have to say, I, I love being around the students. They yeah. keep me young. They keep me honest. Let me tell you, <laughs> they do it that. And um, so, but no, they uh, they they give me the energy. You know, they are a very inquisitive group, and they uh, make sure that I'm you know I'm excited to teach as much as they're excited to learn. Plus, I'm kind of a big ten year old as it is. You know, going out there playing recess, being around with them. Well, he's surrounded by beautiful young people, and so what I'm going to have him do is I'm going to have you young people go in. We'll go clockwise. So. Uh, we have, Tawana, you're there, uh, you'd be like 9 o'clock, as far as the way I'm looking at it. So we're going to start with Tawana, say hello. Say your name and say hello. My name's Tawana, hello. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Keep going, guys. Keep going. Hi, Next my thing. name is Tina, hi. Hello. My name is Beck, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> hi, my name is Luke. You know what? I'll tell you. I'm looking at these folks, and they're 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 gorgeous young people. See, you're surrounded by beauty, Matt. <laughs> yeah, they definitely bring down my beauty level. They're much better <laughs> than I am. So, so you were accounting for a while. You just did. You sounded like you studied education before you went into accounting, too, right? Um, I before I went into accounting, I was a business major. Um, oh, okay. But I worked at camps growing up, kind of you know, rite of passage, teenage job. Um, and I think I really enjoyed that, and and I probably, you know, my mom is a teacher, my dad's in education, my aunt's in we education. Go. Well, the so, way you sound, you had to grow up in on the East Coast, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I grew up right here outside of Mamaroneck in a place called New Rochelle, so uh, not too far. Beautiful, man. Uh, what I remember about New Rochelle is watching the Dick Van Dyke show as a little kid. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hey, you think Nuro, uh, he's in our Nurshell Hall of Fame, that's for sure. <laughs> Beautiful, man. So tell me about your school. So we're um, an elementary school, K-5, about 700 kids, right. um, but a lot, a lot of diversity. Um, I think being so close to New York City and a great suburb here, there's people from all walks of life, different ethnicities, religions, um, and, and what you really see is that we have an air of expectancy. Our, our students are just, there's intellectual engagement every day. They come to school happy, ready to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the things is we're a true community school because, of, you know, we are very connected. There's a lot of empathy among this group. People are always helping each other out, working together here. Lots of things going on all the time. So it's a great community school. Hey, listen, your students need to hear this. They don't realize how fortunate they are to be in a school that's as diverse as yours. I'm telling you that kids that are in schools that are not diverse are missing out because the world is diverse and you guys are getting prepared for that. It's a, it's a great benefit for you all. Yeah, no, I, I agree absolutely. And, and, and I think they know that. We do a lot of, you know, we have a lot of conversations around that and they're, they're well, uh, well versed in, in that. Okay, now the old guys have been talking. I'm going to put the young people on the spot right now. Yeah, and, and, th and this is not going to be an easy question for you guys, but you got to come up with something. And when you talk, kind of slide close to the microphone so we can hear you. And here we I'm go. Gonna... We're going to start out with Tawana. Start out with Tawana. And I want, I want to know, we're coming to your 30th birthday party, where you live and what you do. Um... I am either going to be graduating from MIT, <laughs> and I'm going to be working at NASA, or I'm going to be a professional soccer player, slash the next me at ham. <laughs> hey, have, did, uh, you, did you see Hidden Figures, the movie? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs> that motivates you some? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, that's awesome. That's awesome. So let's have, um, Lena, why don't you come on down? Um, so on my 30th birthday, I will be graduating from, well, 10 years ago, I will be graduating from Syracuse University. Very good. And I would have a family, and I would live in Florida, <laughs> and I would be a gender right lawyer. Wow, that sounds very ambitious. Great decision. Syracuse, Orange Man, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. Let's have uh, Dash. Come on down, Dash. On my 30th birthday, 
I'll have a nice family and uh, I'll be a graduate from MIT uh, 10 years ago. And I'll be a criminal prosecution lawyer. Dang, man. A lot of lawyers in here. That's all. Lawyers and engineers. Yeah, a lot of lawyers. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay. Give me Noah. Come on down, my man. On my 30th birthday, I would be a professional swimmer, graduated from Rochester School, um, Chuck College. Uh-huh. And I'll have a family, and I'll, I'll probably live, I'll live in New York. Hey, I want to tell you something, Noah. I always have a hard time knowing when to catch my breath when I swim. You ever have that problem? Nope. <laughs> That's yeah. good. What's your trick? You got a trick when you swim? Yeah. Mostly blow out my nose. Very good. Very good. Okay, we got one more. We got um, Luke. Come on down, Luke. Okay. On my 30th birthday, I see me uh, being a graduate uh, graduate uh, 10 years ago of Ohio State University. Whoa. And I didn't put him up to that Whoa. one. Whoa. Okay, uh, keep talking, Noah. Oh, excuse me, not Noah. Um, I'm talking to Luke. Sorry, Luke. Go ahead. Keep talking. And living in San Francisco, California. Beautiful. Well, I'm a graduate of Ohio State University, so it's a small world. That's that's really interesting. I was not anticipating that at all. Okay, Matt P. Here comes a question for you, sir. Um, when I think of Matt, Matt and I got to know each other through Twitter. He listened to a couple podcasts. He found them interesting. We started uh, interacting back and forth, and I, I was really drawn to him immediately. And when I think of Matt, when I think of Matt Porricelli, I think of a student-led learning evangelist, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So you got to think about my audience. We're at a big tent revival meeting right now, and paint a portrait of your class that will transform my listener into a convert, sir. Can you do that? Oh, absolutely, I can do that. Got, <laughs> you guys jump in and help me out when you need to. But, um, you know, I, I think to the outside perspective, you walk by, you might see chaos. Right. But uh, not that's not – it's the absolute. Um, noise is the sound of engagement. Anytime you walk by, there's kids working in small groups. They're running their own learning. They are leading their own learning. I am no longer the authority in the classroom of – who does what and how you learn. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see myself as that way. Only my students know what works best for them. So you're going to come in, you're going to see flexible seating where every day kids are choosing different places to sit. Right. Whether they're at high top tables, bouncy balls. Um, and and what's, what's interesting is, you know, really at the beginning it's very novel, right? Like mm -hmm. the idea of first classroom where I can – what do you mean there's no assigned seating and I can do what I want? But those things really support, you know, learning decisions and responsibility. And you start to see these students taking, you know, taking ownership of not just themselves, but each other, helping each other out, making the right decisions, um, you know, and then going forward and, and just, you know, personalizing their own learning experiences where, you know, standards are standards, and we're all going to learn what we have to learn, but it might all look different, and the products will be different, and for some kids, that might be making a podcast. In fact, uh, Luke and Noah here, they can talk more about it, I'm sure. Yeah. They're working on their passion project is their own Luke and Noah show podcast, so no better, no better place to be here, or, you know, uh, whether they're building with their hands. Mm -hmm. You know, a student-led learning environment is about giving up control. And when you trust the 23 minds in that room, great things happen. All right, guys, you got to back them up here. you, you got to confirm what, what your teacher's talking about. Somebody give me an example of something you, that you did in class that you thought was an amazing learning experience. Something we did in class that was an amazing learning experience was BYOD, Bring Your Own Device to School Day. Yeah. Um, and we were responsible to do research on our device, not play games on it. <laughs> was that tough? What? Was that hard to, hard to focus on school and, and not just kind of play around some? Yeah. <laughs> I agree, man. <laughs> there are times I'm teaching that I want to check out, you know, my text message, what have you. So, but that's awesome. So, tell me what you did with your device. Um, we got hooked up to the library 
and we could check out books and put them on hold, mm -hmm. and then we walked to the library and picked them up and for our passion projects so we could read them and learn about our passion projects. Excellent example. Somebody else jump in here. Tell me something really fun you did in class. Really, really a powerful learning experience. Well, we did passion projects, and I made a Rube Goldberg machine. Yeah. And I, I learned that, like, you'll fail many times, but if you, like, keep on doing it, you'll finally succeed. Excellent, man. Excellent. Keep going, guys. I'm loving this. So, uh, um... I learned, uh, uh, I did passion project that, that you, uh, not everything's going to work right away. You're going to fail a lot and you're going to, and not everybody's project's going to be the same because it's your passion. <laughs> Very good. Anybody else? Um, one of the things that we did that was like, um, freedom in our class or student led was silent day. Uh -huh. And that was when we were, um, the teacher didn't say anything, and he had some plans for us, and we had to collaborate to figure out uh, what time it was and what to, where do we have to go. Like, we had to come to the computer lab, uh -huh. and we had to get everybody quiet, um, quiet in a straight line to walk down to the computer lab. Was that hard for kids to do? No. 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 I think it was hard. I think the hardest part was keeping the teacher quiet all day because he ah. likes just much. <laughs> hey, listen, Noah, were you a leader in that situation? Yes. You seem like that. You seem like you got a good air about you. <laughs> Anything else, youngins? Um, yep. Hit me. We also do breakouts uh -huh. instead of tests. So basically there's a box. And we have to use information about whatever we were going to do a test on. And we have to use that information to break locks. And there's a prize inside the box. Yeah. Andy. <laughs> so you guys love the way your teacher teaches, right? Yeah. <laughs> Matt, that's got to make you feel wonderful, sir. Uh, it, it does, absolutely. Well, when you hear these kids, I heard passion projects, I heard silence, I heard a new way to assess kids. Throw something in there. Out of all the tactics you employ, what's your favorite and why do you think it's so popular? I, I have to say, I think ultimately it's just the building of the relationships in this classroom. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, relationships matter, the heartbeat matters, and, you know, <laughs> they... We've been reflecting on the year, and a lot of them have been saying stuff like, oh, you know, you're more than a teacher, you're a friend, and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and even though we, I can do all these things, ultimately it comes down to I know my students as, as people. They're human beings, and they know me that way as well. Um, and I, I've tried to rebrand a lot of traditional experiences for them, and I think one of those that really – that really kind of goes with the relationships and that is just the way that we've redone their homework. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't have traditional homework. They're not going home and we don't have a reading log to fill out anymore. And we're not doing, you know, I'm not sending them home with busy work, but I know that Tawana is into, by the way, Tawana, black belt, Taekwondo. Ah! I mean, don't mess. <laughs> that cute face can't, don't be fooled by it. But, I might know that about her, and I might just shoot her a video that I found on YouTube that supports that interest. Yeah. Um, so you try to flip the classroom experience for them. Mm -hmm. You try to um, personalize their learning into the things that interest them. And what you find is that they are now, they're engaged because it's personal for them, right? They've become these, you know, they have these positive attitudes about learning, and, and they're promoting their own intellectual engagement. Um, and I think it comes down to just to relationships. I, I don't know if it was their favorite, but my favorite was I was on a trip to France, and I would post videos oh, yeah. of myself <laughs> everywhere I went. And, I mean, it was, my wife is going, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just sending my students a video of me at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and, um, you know, yeah, but there they are now trying to figure out where I am and learning about geography at the same time. and. And, you know, making those connections. Hey, guys, when your teacher and I were your age, we used to have to sit in desks, and we would probably get, you know, 10 math problems, and we'd sit there and work on them, and we'd, we just sat and did stuff so much. 
I bet you guys would hate that, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel like you and there's a sub. Oh, well, it, well, so, it sounds like you guys do your own sub. Like, you kind of just create the class on your own. Yeah. yeah, they're good. They can run their own class. I, subs have said that about them. They go, oh, we got poor choice class. That's fine. They'll they'll take care of it. So they are, they're pretty good that way. All right, you guys are the teachers right now. Each one of you. I, I, I want you each to take a stab at this. And what's going on is you're talking to teachers all over the world. But, but you're the expert. And you're going to give them one piece of advice on how they can do a better job in the classroom. Anything you want to say, go for it. Um, I feel like te- all teachers should be like Mr. P. Like, <laughs> let, let students do, like, be free. <laughs> Sounds great. Go ahead, guys. Um, I think students should, all teachers, their classrooms should all have flexible seating. Okay, very good. I think that all teachers should uh, try to let their students be independent little and little until they can be as independent as our class. Beautiful. I think that other teachers should um, make tests more fun. (laughs) Agreed. (laughs) Yeah, I think they should let us be more independent and not rule the class and let us kind of rule the class. All right. Mr. P, you got to jump in here, and you got to throw in your two cents. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I echo their sentiments. I think it's about giving up control. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 you know, that's really hard. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. I mean, you've, you've been teaching for nine years. Did you always teach this way? No, absolutely not. What, what made you change? Um, you know, I, it, it, it didn't, I think I needed to teach the way – for the teacher that I needed as a kid. Right, you know? right. That's, a, that, that, that's insightful. Go, go a little bit with that. You know, I think I needed a teacher who was going to let me walk around. I mean, even now, <laughs> good thing yeah. this video. Like, I've been pacing around while they're talking. Right. But I'm still sitting and I'm engaged. And, and I think, you know, student voice matters. And I think when you think you're, you know, the sole authority in the room... It, 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 you're taking away a lot of opportunities. So that was the kind of teacher I needed as a kid. And I listen, my, I, my kids were always engaged, and we always had fun, and I respected students, and they respected me. And But it just, I don't know, there was something missing there. Um, hey, let and, me ask you this. This will be the last yeah. question, I promise. But, you know, yes. I, 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 I think we're similar, and I've gone through a, a similar change. At first... I felt like it really bothered me when somebody wasn't productive. Yes. And, and that, that really worried me as a teacher. But it's okay, isn't it? Well, absolutely. I think I spent so many of my early years uh-huh. working so hard to prevent mistakes uh-huh. or prevent someone from getting something wrong or not finishing work. And it was like all about compliance, right? Yes. yes. And, and now it's like process over product. You know what? You didn't finish this, or you got this wrong. It's all right. We learned from it, and that's what learning is. And and I, you just see, there's a much, there's like a relaxed air about the students because of that. That's beautiful. Hey guys, you've been awesome. I, I'd love to have a collective goodbye from you all. Now you ready? One, yep. two, three. Bye. Bye. I was I was worried there. I thought there was a little downtime there. I was a bit worried. Hey, I love you. You guys look great. And happy summer vacation in just two days. So here we are at the What You Can Do Tomorrow section. Hopefully, like me, after listening to this episode, you're revitalized and you're excited about the upcoming school year. And once again, please come over to the show notes if you want to see a picture of these young folks, if you want to get access to Matt's awesome Google Doc. Okay, and prepping for tomorrow, answer yourself. This question, what clues did you hear in the episode which would explain Matt's kids' deep affection for him? Compile a list of ideas and determine how you could implement some in your classroom. Starting tomorrow, read Matt's awesome Google Doc. It's It's like a cookbook that has great recipes on how to make tomorrow awesome. Take one of the ideas he promotes and weave it into tomorrow's lesson. Deep brief students at the end of the experience to see how you did, see how you can make changes. And then finally, seek out a like-minded colleague 
who would be game to experiment with some of Matt's techniques. This partner in crime can help you and vice versa. The world is changing at a warp speed. Education needs to change too. Matt's classroom is the classroom of the future. Emulate his example. And good luck tomorrow engaging your students. Show notes for this episode can be found at jamesallensternivant.com. If you enjoy Hacking Engagement, please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes.